Hey everybody, welcome to my first video in my Road to OSCP series. Uh, essentially, I decided during this coronavirus outbreak that I would start studying for my OSCP. It's definitely a cert that I want to get. I want to break into the field of penetration testing uh, and offensive security. This will not be the only series on my YouTube channel. I hope to cover all aspects of cybersecurity, including things like digital response, <laughs> digital forensics, incident response, and other topics on all sides of security. So this will be a walkthrough for Blue on tryhackme.com. Uh, if I'm not looking at the camera, I am looking at a script. This is my first YouTube video, so I decided to type everything out to make it try to go a little smooth. All right, so let's pull up the next screen here. Let's go over to my virtual machine. All right, so here we have, not, let's go not now for notifications. Here we have Blue. This is on tryhackme.com. Highly recommend you to sign up for an account, especially if you're new to penetration testing. Um, I really like how they set it up. It's a little less intimidating than Hack the Box since it's easier to ask for help. And that's the whole point of learning is being able to ask for help. So let's start by scanning and learn what exploit this machine is vulnerable to. So make sure you deploy your machine. That's how you get your IP address up here. So I've scanned this machine once, but let's start by going ping. Just send out a ping just to see, make sure our machine is online. So ping the IP address. Looks like we have some replies, good. So let's do nmap sv sc and oa. So I like to do oa, and I like to just output it out to the desktop. Uh, or just name it blue. You can probably see it in the background of the nmap scan that I did previously. And then you just do your IP address. Nmap is finished. So let's go through these results. Try hack me wants to know how many ports are open with a port number under 1,000. You can see we have 135. 139 and 445 open. 445 is interesting because it is SMB and Windows 7 Professional 7601 Service Pack 1. This is susceptible to Eternal Blue, which we've kind of realized from the box description. But so we already know what exploit we probably need to use to uh, leverage this box and exploit it. So what is this machine vulnerable to? Answer in the form of MS, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So let's head out to exploit database and let's just search eternal blue. I can, you can see I've already done it. Um, MS17010. So let's uh, put that in and it's the correct answer. Gain, let's gain access using this exploit. So first things first, we're gonna wanna start Metasploit. So let's head back into our command line. And let's just do uh, it's MSF console. Man, my typing is really bad right now. So let's uh, get that a second to run. It takes a minute. Okay. And using the same kind of thing that we did to search exploit database, we can search Metasploit. So let's search Eternal Blue. And these are all the exploits used to leverage the Eternal Blue vulnerability. Um, so I think exploit number three is the one that they were looking for. The path is exploit windows SMB SMS 17010 at eternal blue. So let's copy that. And that'll be our path for that's for finding the exploitation code we will run against the machine. This is the full path. So we just, to do that, we do use three to load up the exploit in the Metasploit. And now we're going to want to set options. Um, or no, it's just options, sorry about that. So you do options to get to the all the options. And let's take a look at these. So our host is required, but it's not filled in. So we'll be putting the target hosts. So we'll be putting the IP address of our target machine into there. So let's do set our hosts to 10.10.113.41. You can replace that with your IP address, obviously. So once that's set, we can hit, we can fill that out. Uh, our host, and then run the exploit. To do that, you just hit run. So at any point that you are stuck and you don't know where to go from here, you can hit on, did that not run? There we go. You can hit on try hack me, the hit button, and it'll help you out. Um, so maybe we can do one of those in a couple, maybe on the escalate section. So we'll give this a second and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so you see here it says we win. Sometimes it says fail, um, and you have to rerun the exploit. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, 
this exploit is known to blue screen boxes every once in a while, so it takes a couple tries to get running. Once you see this win window, if uh, nothing pops up after, just hit enter once. And now you see we have a shell at C Windows System 32. So from here we can do like, who am I, right? And we can see that we are an NT Authority system. So I believe that's all we have to do for this section. So let's ask, let's work on escalating this shell. So to start, you control Z to background this section, right? So we're gonna transform this shell into a interpreter shell. I recommend you Google how to do this yourself so you can learn a little bit about Metasploit before um, I go, but if not, we're gonna do use and then shell to, oh, I typed that wrong, to interpreter, okay? Okay, so. That just gave us our modules, and we are now using post to, so we are now using shell to interpreter. So next, we're going to have to set our session for this shell to the session ID that we were using before. So to do that, you go to the session. Uh, so let's do sessions. Let's see our sessions. So see how it has a session ID of one? So let's look at the options here. And then we're gonna go set session, spell that correctly, one. And now we're gonna run. So now this will create a interpreter shell in a new session if it completes. So let's give this a couple minutes. Okay, so you see where it says interpreter shell session two open? That's good, we like that. So give this a few more seconds. And again, if nothing pops up, hit enter. It might get it to pop through. So there we go. And now we're going to hit sessions dash u. I believe it's u. Let me check my notes real quick. Um, this is actually something new that I just learned. So it is sessions i. See, look, I messed that up. But sessions i and then two. Now we have our interpreter shell. So from here, we have a lot of power. We can migrate services, we can dump hashes. Let's migrate, uh, let's migrate services. So we can do a PS, and that'll show us a list of all the services running on the system. I'm gonna mi migrate, so you wanna migrate to something that has the same authority that you have. So I'm gonna migrate to servicehost.exe with NT authority system. So let's do migrate 2564. Access is denied, that's weird. Huh, okay, we'll just try something else. Let's do, let's do cmd.exe, let's do 1748. There we go, migration has completed successfully. So let's see what we can do here. Let's do hash dump. So we can see that just dumped the username and passwords for this machine. So let's copy out John. All right, so we're gonna work on cracking this password. So let's just run through all this. Once the interpreter shell is complete, verify we have escalated privileges, did that. List all the processes, PS. Now migrate to the process that we did that. So we migrated over from 2376 to 2564 and that failed. So then we migrated to 1748, which is cmd.exe. So let's open up the cracking section. Dump the non-default user's password and crack it. So we know it's John. So let's... Uh, come into another shell, uh, another command line window here. Let's do new tab. And we're gonna do John. So sudo John. Um, but first things first, we're gonna open a text file on our desktop and you're gonna copy that hash into here and you're gonna save it as john.hash. So sudo John, um, then you do the path to wherever you save that file. You're gonna do tac tac format equals nt, because these are Windows hashes, tac tac word list, and then give your path to wherever you save the Rocky word list. I save mine in op, rocky.txt, and then run. Type in your password if you need to. Command not found, probably because I capitalized it. Interesting. Oh, 
I really got to work on my capitalization. Um, so my file isn't capitalized either. So there we go. Um, so if this is your first time cracking this password, it'll show up in this menu right here. This, however, is not my first time cracking this password, so I already have it cracked. So anytime you crack this password again, you have to take that out and add show. And your password is right here, ALQFNA22, ALQFNA22, correct answer. So let's work on finding the flags. Find the three flags printed on this machine. Oh, planted, not printed, sorry. Flag one, let's look at the hint. Can you see it? Let's find the flags. Flag one. Can you see it? So my intuition tells me this is in the C directory. So we're gonna to wanna to CD into C. Let that go. Can I do DIR? Oh. So let's see if that worked. So it did not work. CD, C. Let's try that. There we go. So we're now in the C directory. So let's print out the directory. And there we have a file, flag1.txt. So let's do cat flag1.txt. Access the machine is the flag. Flag 2. Windows really doesn't like the location of this flag and can occasionally delete it. It may be necessary in some cases to terminate and restart the machine. So if you do not see this flag, following in this guide, you may have to restart the machine and start all over. So let's see the hint. I wish I wrote this down where I kept my, wish I wrote down where I kept my password. Luckily it's still stored here on Windows. So if you think about where Windows stores passwords, you know that they get stored in the SAM file in the registry. So we know that's in C Windows System 32 config. So let's do CD there. So let's do C Windows System 32 config. Okay, and print working directory to make sure it worked. Okay, we're there. And let's do directory. And there we see at the bottom again, flag2.txt. So let's cat flag2.txt, easy. SAM database elevated access. That is the correct answer. And now let's try to find flag3. Let's go to the hint. You'll need, elevate, you'll need to have elevated privileges to access this flag. So what I did to find this flag was I went and enumerated further so I went back to the C directory, I did C, and then I did DIR again, right? So we have documents, logs, program files, program data recovery, system volume information, users, windows. I wanted to peek around at the users, so I did CD users, right? Okay, make sure that works again, say users. So let's, director, let's see the directory of the users. So we have default John public. Well, John is really the only interesting one. So let's CD John. And I already know that I'm gonna go into his documents because I'm nosy. So let's CD documents. And let's print the directory here, see what's here. We have pictures, videos, music, and what do you know, flag3.txt. Let's cat flag3.txt. Sorry about that, someone just tried to walk in my house, thought I was gonna get robbed, but I think I'm gonna keep that in the video because that was kind of funny. So now we have cat flag3.txt. Admin documents can be valuable, and what do you know, it is the correct answer. So that is all for my tutorial on Blue. I hope you found it enjoyable, informational, and definitely will be doing this again, so definitely subscribe, like the channel, let me know how I can do this better, if there's any different format you think would be good, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.